Hello, and welcome to the Physical Therapy Owners Club. I am Nathan Shields. Got my good buddy Adam Robin with me again. Hey, partner, what's up? What's up, Nathan? Glad to be here, man. All right. You know, uh, I can't remember, but there's been a few times over the past number of podcasts where I'm like, I don't think I ever did an inter- or a, did a, a topic regarding blank, fill in the blank, right? And I've been doing this for almost six or seven years now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's amazing to think that there's plenty of things that I haven't actually discussed, but I'm saying it again today. Today, we're talking about something that I haven't really focused on, I guess. That's mm-hmm. a better way to put it. And that is the interview. Mm-hmm. So much r- right now we're talking about recruiting for physical therapists because everybody needs a physical therapist, right? And what needs to get done. And and if you're still looking for a physical therapist, you need to be talking to Adam you need to talk to Will Humphreys. You need to talk to look at our previous podcasts about what it takes to recruit somebody. So f- talk to so figure that out. But uh, I, you brought this up, Adam, because it sounds like a, a number of our coaching clients, maybe they're doing the recruiting process. And now the interview is seeming seemingly really clunky, clunky. Clunky. And here's is the that thing. what you're seeing. You're seeing the interviews are just it's yes. something's not going quite right. Well, listen, everybody's got their ideas about ways to do things. And by the way, this is Adam's Adam's ideas. I'm sure like if you listen to somebody else talk about it, they might have different perspectives. But in my opinion, the hiring process has changed. Like you can no longer hire, recruit, and uh, onboard PTs the same way anymore, right? And so- What do you mean by that? Right. So, you know, back in the day- PTs you're, were a bunch. You're you're too young, dude. I'll tell you if it was back in the day. So give me your two cents. <laughs> PTs were abundant or more abundant. Right? Eh, it's always been a struggle, dude. How many times though have we been like But it's not like this. It's not been right? like this. I will admit. Right. So it's, it's like, not like this, yeah. I you know, we've got this idea that the interview is like a test. Yes. It's a test. It's almost like are you good enough? Are you good enough? Like prove to me why I should grant you permission to work, right? And it's like, we've got this, I don't know where that's come from, but I think I, I, I think you crumple that up and throw it away. Because really what we're doing is we're selling an opportunity. Right. Right. So we might have to start thinking about what do we need to create to close this client or this, mm-hmm. this, this new hire or this candidate, how do we convince them? How do we enroll them in the idea of working with us and integrating them with, with our, with our culture, helping them get what they want so that they would be happy and more excited about working with us. Right. So it's more of a sales process. I really think that the, the recruiting piece is like, how do I get the leads? Mm-hmm. And then the interview is like, how do I close the deal? How do I close the deal? Right. And so uh, there's a disconnect there with, with how to show up the type of energy to show up the questions to ask. Right. And the things well, that you're looking for. Yeah. And that's, but I, and I, and I don't fault any of the owners for it because we've never been trained on how to do an interview. We've been part of the interview our entire lives. And now you're asking us to do it. So we're just going to replicate what we think an interview should look like, or what we've been through before, what we've experienced in the past. And we'll bring down some questions off of Google that, tell us what to ask. Right. Um, part of it is, I think a majority of it is the sales process. If you've figured out during the interview process, that person is at a val- that person is a value fit. Correct. So once they've shown that they're a value fit. So we always talked about value-based hirings and value-based firings. We would talk about our values during the interview process and while doing so observing their body language. Right. Some people talk about values and, you know, they're maybe they get a little bit more relaxed or they look at the walls and don't Mm -hmm. aren't engaged as much. Or we ask them about um, times in which they might have. So uh, one of our values was growth. What have you done in in the past uh, year or two years to better yourselves? Or what are some of the goals that you have for the next five years? And what books have you read recently? Those would be things that would I I think would exemplify growth if they answered those in the affirmative. And we do that with each of the values. And 
and by this time you've you've probably communicated with them once or twice are we talking specifically about the in-person interview or the phone interview the in-person the in-person yeah so you probably talk to them a little bit maybe it's in per maybe it's virtual because they're on the other side of the country or whatever but it's that mm -hmm. interview right we're talking about and um and so you talk about some of those things and you want to hear about them ideally they're doing most of the talking yes right? ideally they're they're telling you all about them you've done some insight you've provided some insightful questions that require more than one word answers you know um i i thought i was so cool because i'd ask what do you think some of your weaknesses are you know just mm -hmm. yeah you're not yeah. expecting that are you, one are you good enough here comes the left hook <laughs> why should i choose you yeah and i'm like why what do you think some of your weaknesses are because everyone's yeah. gonna say what are your strengths and and uh, i can't tell you how many times disappointedly people would say I care too much. Yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> That's not an honest, honest answer. Um, but uh, I agree with you. I think once you've determined this is a value fit and you've also laid out, I think part of it is, Hey, these are some of our expectations Yeah. in terms of productivity. Do you see a problem with that? Do you have any concerns, questions about that? Because we don't need to go any further if you do. That's the price yeah. drop. Yeah, exactly. That's the price drop. Yep. And right. so, um, but that, at that, it's like, I got an amazing culture. I've got amazing people who wouldn't want to work for me. I mean, that's mm -hmm. really the type of attitude you're talking about, isn't it? Yeah. So, so the way that I look at things is like, <clears throat> I'm the owner and along this journey, um, I started to realize, and this is just for me and my company that, I no longer had a physical therapy business. I had a coaching company and I coached physical therapists on how to a get the most out of their career. I coached them on leadership. I coached them on setting goals and getting and going and getting, uh, taking action, making an impact. I coached them on marketing, coached them on sales coach them on performance. Right. And, and I coached didn't them say anything in there about treating patients, none, <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing. Let the right? content it's nothing, do that. <laughs> right. So like I have a coaching company and I coach others on how to run a physical therapy business. And whenever that shifted for me, I realized I have a product that I'm selling. Mm. I have a product that I'm selling. I am selling a greater, like a greater possibility for the people who are looking for an opportunity, who are looking for, who are looking for the ability to like get re-engaged and re-excited about their career. And I'm, I have a company that can help them bridge that gap between where they are and where they really want to go in their career. Hmm. And that's what I'm selling. Right. Give me an example and, of some of the things that you're saying when you're selling your clinic. So I'm going to give a shout out to Chris Smith. Chris Smith is a, a mentor of mine. Um, you can check him out. He has a, a program called, uh, I believe it's called the campfire effect. Uh -huh. And in, in that he, he, he has a sales process where that he calls the enrollment narrative. And so, you know, the first thing, question I have is it's going to be like, Hey, Nathan, super grateful for you to be here today. Really interested in learning more about what you, what, what's most important to you. Tell me, like, what are your career goals? What do you really want out of your career? Right. And what I'm doing there is I'm helping them to dream a little bigger about what's possible for them. Right. What can I do with my career? Maybe, maybe I've had these career goals that I've let die that got stuck in the PT mill that I'm working at. And I'm giving them, I'm, I'm giving them the place to really like dream about what's possible for them. Right. And then once, once I can help them realize what they really, really want, and I can envision myself helping them get that. Now, we, now we're cooking with gas, right? Now we're cooking with gas. It's like, I've heard everything that you're saying. And sometimes it's like, I've always wanted to get into pediatrics. I've always wanted to learn how to uh, work with neurological patients and start a pelvic floor program. Like it's been a dream of, that's why I've gotten, that's why I became a physical therapist. And it's like, really? 
we don't have pelvic floor in our clinic. I would love to do that. Tell me more about what type of, like what type of possibilities would that open up for you? Like, why would that make you happy? Right. I'm selling them on the idea of going after that. Yeah. You're not telling them what you can do for them. They're like, what would that do for your life? If you yeah. have that opportunity, just like you're selling the plane of care, just like you're selling the plane of care That's to your true. patient, you're selling right along that journey. You're going to listen to what they really, really want. You're going to listen to what's stopping them from getting there. You're going to ask some value-based questions to make sure there's some alignment there. But you can you can do the enrollment narrative and you can help people get where they really want to go. And you can also weed them out with some good value-based questions as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I don't think Chris does this, but I think he does a version of it where some people have said, you know what, if at any point do that during this interview, you feel like it's not going to be a fit just feel free to let me know and I'll, and I'll give you the same courtesy. Um, that way you don't have to feel like you're stuck for an hour mm -hmm. <laughs> and that kind of thing. But Chris's version is kind of like, Hey, if at any point during this conversation, um, I think that I, I think that we can be of value to each other. I'm going to let you know that. Amen. You know, that's where I, that's how I like to start it. Right. Like when we frame yeah. up the conversation, we frame up the interview and it's like, Hey, Nathan, I want to let you know, like today I'm here to learn more about you. We'd have to, we don't even have to make any decisions today. Let's just, let's just get to know each other. And if it's a good fit, great. We'll talk about what it's like to work together. And if it's not, mm -hmm. that's okay too. We won't have a, we, we won't have a follow-up appointment. Yeah. We're, we won't. We're just I'll, decide I'll, right now at the end of this conversation, we're going to decide if we're going to meet again. That's right. <laughs> we're going to decide, Hey, do we want to have another conversation? Mm -hmm. Right. We're decompressing the room. Like, Hey, there's no expectations here. You can let your guard down. I want to learn a little bit more about who you are. I want to be authentic with you. I want to be real with you. Next question. What's the most important thing in your career and how can I help you get it? Mm -hmm. Right. And you, and you lead them down that enrollment narrative and mm -hmm. it's a much more fun way to do Isn't an it? interview, much more fun way to, to do an interview. I love the decompressing of it. Like I'm not deciding right now if I'm hiring you or not. <laughs> yeah. You and I are going to decide if we're going to have a second date. Correct. Right. If we're going to have another conversation and if you're not feeling it, great, that's fine. If I'm not feeling it, that's fine too. Let's just decompress and get to know each other. And, and have you found as you've done this, that there's a point during the conversation where either it clicks and you're like, yeah, I want this person. And have you had the other side of it where it's like, oh, I don't want this person. Have you had both experiences as you've of gone course. through this? Yeah, yeah, of course. So everybody's going to have a little bit of a different culture, right? Mm -hmm. For me, I'm a culture of passion. I'm a culture of emotion. I'm a culture of excitement, right? And so like when I'm asking these questions, like I want to see them get excited too. Mm. Right. I want to see you get like reignited about like, yeah, I've, I've been missing this. Like I'm, this is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for somebody who can help me get excited about, about work again and who can hold me accountable and push me and challenge me and help me be a better version of myself. Mm -hmm. Right. And so when I can start seeing them get excited and start buying into the idea of like really going for what they really, really want, that's an indication to me that Hey, I'm having a good conversation with this person. This is, this is a fun conversation. Instead, on the opposite end of what I'll hear for people who aren't a good fit for me are, I just want to, I just want a job, you know, mm. I'm just looking. I just need to pay my student loans. Yeah. You know, I, I just want to like come in, do my, do you know, listen, I got about three or four more years to work and then I'm going to retire. And I just want to like, I don't want to get into all that stuff. You know, and those are no goes for you. Those are no goes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have a hard time fitting in, in my company, right? <laughs> like, because we're a team of go-getters and we're, we're looking to grow. Right. Yeah. That's, that's going to be a hard fit. You're going to really bog us down and we're going to bog you down. We're going to overwhelm you with all of our energy and our excitement. Can you, I know this isn't what we're talking, talking about specifically today, but how do you make the transition between the recruiting efforts that you're doing to that call. 
is I know you work a lot on LinkedIn. Is it just like, Hey, let's jump on a call sometime. And it ends up being this call or what does that look like? Yeah. So like what I'll typically do is, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll first do a, do a quick phone screen. Oh, okay. Right. So right. you are doing a little bit. Uh, you'll, you're yeah, doing it'll be a quick phone screen and, Five, and 10, 15 minutes, 15 minutes tops, you know, Hey, I've got 15 minutes. And I just want to ask you a few questions to see if you want to come in in person. Right. And so we're basically just scraping the surface of that. What are hey, some of have, those questions like, Hey, where do you live? Do you have any career goals? Why, why, mm -hmm. why, why, what's the transition for? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. What's your hey, background you know, like? What's your background? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, Hey, listen, you know what? I don't know if this is a good fit or not, but I'd love to meet with you. Okay. You have time next week to sit for a couple hours. Okay. So you're, you're massaging the recruiting cycles and working that strategy and plan. And then you're doing a 15 minute max phone interview that leads to this interview right here. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. I got Correct. you. And at this time I'm either, I'm either interested or curious, mm -hmm. you know, if I don't have a good feeling on that phone call, if I don't, if I don't feel excited about the idea of, of meeting with them, then they probably wouldn't make it to the interview process. Right. You know? Right. So you're screening along the way. Correct. Correct. Yeah. I see. Interesting. Yeah. And we've done conversation. I'm sure people are like, well, what, what are you doing on the, on the recruiting side? Yeah. We've done interview. We've done the podcast episodes on that. You're just gonna have to go back and find those. <laughs> yeah. We're talking yeah. about, listen, look in your phone book or look in your cell phone. All like those. I was going to say, who has a phone book anymore? Yeah. <laughs> contacts. Go to your contacts. Contact. Yeah, exactly. Look in your contacts. You got about 35 to 40 PTs in there that you've been working with over your career. Oh, call them up. There you go. That's how you get leads. <laughs> you know what I mean? Call, your, call them up. Use your network. Leverage your network. Yeah. Right? Have lunch with them. You know, mm -hmm. sit them down and, and ask them what their goals are. There you go. You got, you your, got 20, 20 leads right your, there. your uh, PT school alumni that you can reach out, reach out to people in your class, right? Mm -hmm. like leverage your network. And then um, when you, after you've, so getting back to that interview specifically that we're talking about, we decide, okay, we're going to have another conversation. What is the general format for that conversation? Are we talking about numbers and terms at that point? What is that looking like? Yeah. So uh, typically what will happen is um, I typically, you know, it's been transforming over the last couple of years, sure. but What'll, what'll happen is I invite them in for a two hour work, working interview slash interview, in-person interview. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like, Hey, welcome to the clinic. Let's get to work. So this is, but we're, this is uh, I'm talking about right after you say, are we going to have a second date? Are we going to have another call? Is that, is, so that second call is, is setting up this working interview. I'm assuming like if people are out of state and they're calling you about your job. Yeah. Yeah. So this is after the phone screen. Yeah. So you did the 15 minute call. You did the call about telling me about your life and dreams. We're going to decide if we have another call. Is the next call the in-person two-hour block? No, no, no. That's going oh. to be the in-person piece. Okay. That's going to all be during the in-person piece. Right, right, right. right so oh, we'll do okay. A, there is another we'll interview. 50, correct. We'll do a 15-minute screen. From there, they're coming in for a two-hour interview with me. Oh, okay. I got you. But we don't necessarily have to make a decision on if we're going to work together or not during that during that time. Oh, so you're wrapping that initial in-person interview into your two hour screen and Correct. like shadow job, shadow, Correct. that kind of stuff. Correct. So part of the, the interview in your situation, cause we would do two separate things and I don't know if it matters either way, but we would have an in-person interview. And if we liked them, then we'd invite them back for the two to four hour shadow, job, mm -hmm. shadow mm -hmm. kind of thing. But you just yeah. wrap it all up in one. Okay. I, I do. See. You know, I think, uh, and the reason why I do that is, you know, I do, I do think that it's important to take your time. Um, I also think that the more practice that you have with hiring, the better you get at it. Mm -hmm. And I also think that in today's climate, you ain't got time to wait. You know, like yeah. if, if yeah. you want to close a deal, the speed to closure is, is, is an important factor no, because there's so many hooks in the water. And if you let that candidate, th this could be the, your next clinical director that helps you open up the next three locations. Right. Right. So like the sense of urgency behind getting to the offer should be there. Like we need to get there as quickly as possible. That's a good mindset to have. 
Yeah. I mean, you can't recruit, do all this recruit, recruiting effort knowing that it's hard to find physical therapists and then take your time and then like pump the brakes once you get to that point. That's not a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's important. I think it's really, really important to get to that a little bit quicker. Uh, you know, I like what you're doing as well, because we got to recognize, we got to respect people's time and mm -hmm. to like come in for an in-person interview and then separately come another time for a job shadow and mm -hmm. highly recommend the job shadow, by the way, I wouldn't hire somebody without it, no matter what the position. Um, it, it just takes more time. It's kind of hard. Mm -hmm. So to do it all at once, I like, I like that idea. And, um, I'm assuming, well, I, knowing your clinic, you're not the person that's, that they're shadowing, right? Oh, no, absolutely. No, no, no. We got to get the team involved. You're right. Get the team involved, right? Because here's the thing. The beautiful thing about getting, you're going to hire some knuckleheads. Mm -hmm. If you've been in business any long, any, any length of time, you're going to hire some knuckleheads who you shouldn't have hired. But those are also good. Because you get to learn. Mm -hmm. You and your team get to learn. It's like, you remember that list of people that we fired? Remember what they were like? Yeah, we don't. Remember all those indicators that we, that, we, that we learned? We don't want that anymore, right? Yeah. So now your team is becoming more aware. And they're starting to be like, ah, red flag here. Yep. No red flag here, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the key is hire a little bit quicker but make your onboarding process a little bit more rigid and less risky after the hire. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. So instead of like spending 90 days of like a bunch of rigorous onboarding, like let's get to work pretty quick and let's see if, if, if this is a good fit. So even, even the initial 90 day, the days of employment is still like a probationary period. Like right. if you don't, you know, if you don't make it through the 90 days, yeah. It's like let's, going to the next. Let's right? leverage that 90 days to make sure this is a fit. Let's not Correct. drag our feet there either. Correct. Yeah, I get it. I love the job shadow and and I'm surprised how many people don't do it, but it is not a very common practice. And so I wish more people would do it, especially after listening to it. Because it, whether it's following you, you know, if you're the only provider, that's fine. Ideally, they're following another provider if you have one in the clinic, because it's at that point when they're peer to peer that they can let their guard down a little bit and you can get a truer sense of who that person is. They're going to say things and do things in front of someone else that they wouldn't do in front of their do or say in front of their interviewer. Right. And, um, and we, we, we missed some bullets uh, on uh, a couple of hires. Cause I thought after the interview, this was great. And then found out afterwards from the team, like, no, she Terrible did this idea. and that. Yeah. And she said yeah. that. Yeah. And, or they were on their phone and didn't even engage with us or the patients. And so, yeah, I'm glad we missed some of those people. It was a good filter. It's a great filtering process. I wouldn't yeah, say it it's good. It's a great filtering process. Yeah. And, and you have to go through those to become more aware of what it looks, what they look like during your interview process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. And you also have to understand like, I think that as you do more and more interviews, you start to get really, really clear on the type of avatar you're looking for. Yep. And you also start to get clear on who's your avatar in disguise, right? Mm -hmm. Who's who's the person that kind of looks like your avatar, but also has this other evil, <laughs> evil villain behind, behind the curve. You know what I mean? Like yeah. maybe they're a little passionate, they're high energy, but they're also like super anxious and get really, really overwhelmed all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. So like you can mistake those two, right. So really understanding who your avatar is and also how they, how they, uh, you know, the chameleon in the group, if you will. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know? there, there's a, there's a beauty behind, um, as you've lived, as you've expressed and, um, hired and fired according to your values that you start naturally developing a culture. Yeah. And during that shadow is also a time for them to experience that culture. And if they are not a fit, then they will self-select. Correct. And so it, I think that's, I, I love the job shadow because of that. Um, and hopefully more people do do it. Now, I'm assuming you're going from interview to job shadow. Are you then like sending them off and getting the team's input and coming back to them a day later. Is that kind of yeah, so how it goes after almost. that? So we typically will do 
job shadow interview. Oh, they're job shadowing first and then the interview. Correct. Okay. Then the interview, right? Because okay. there's a an great opportunity for you to be like, so what'd you think? Oh, yeah, sure. You know, okay. what'd you think about that? Right. And so what I'll do is like, I don't necessarily do all the interviews, but if it's a great fit, if it's just a knockout home run, then we will, we will present an offer. Most of the time we don't. Most of the time we don't. Mm. Because during that interview and during that shadowing process, after I have an opportunity to talk to them about what's most important to them and I get them excited about that, then I get to ask them like, what do you think about working here? Right? And if you've served them well, if they're a good fit, if they're aligned with your values and you've, you've helped them realize what's most important to them, like they should naturally be more connected to you and, and the idea of working for you. Hmm. Right. If they've enjoyed the work, if, they, if they're a good fit. Right. And what you want to hear is like, this place is amazing. Like I've, I've like, learned more about my, the dreams that I've let go. And like, I've really learned about what's most important to me here. Like I can see myself really growing and I can see how this, you can get the best out of me. I would love to consider working here. Mm. You want to get that. You want to get that because guess what you get to do now? Well, we have to think about it. Let me, let me think about that for a little bit, right? You get to, you get to put up the little, (laughs) exactly. You get to pull back. Now Um, you've served them right now. You get to pull back and be like, well, we do have some expectations that are going to be required to work here. So like, can we, is it okay if we go through those productivity, right? All the things that you don't want to go right now, you have like, you start with what they want and then you end with what you want. Right. Mm, Nice transition, bro. Nice transition. At that point, it's like, yeah, what do you think about that? Like, our, like I want to help you get this, but these are some of the things that we would need for that to be an even exchange. What do you think about that? Yeah, that sounds fantastic. I can totally get on board with that. All right? Mm-hmm. Okay, fantastic. Well, listen, we're not going to – let's talk about what an offer would look like. So what's your dream offer look like? You know, and you can kind of get that picture, and then it's like, okay, great. I'm going to talk with my team and we're going to put together an offer. I want you to really think about if you have any more questions, I'll give you a call tomorrow and we'll talk about what we can offer you. Cool. All right. Great. That's kind of my process. Speed. I love it. And to speak to your process a little bit, like how many people have you hired in the past? Let's say, I don't know. We're in March right now. How many people have you, how many PTs have you hired this year? PTs. Um, PTs, none. None this year. Haven't had to. Uh, oh, several nice. PTAs. I've hired four speech therapists and two OTs. So over here, I've hired four in or five. The past six. Two, in the past two plus months? Yeah. Yeah. So like just two weeks ago, we hired three therapists. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. Cool. And I've got. But you don't have an issue with, with finding physical therapists either, which is crazy. No, 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 no. I have four, I have four candidates who are in our pipeline and we're going to, we're going to make an offer. We've got several interviews lined up. So, so yeah, we're doing, we're doing well with it. All right. Cool. Impressive, dude. Hmm. What more do you want to say about the interview process? I think we covered uh, like soup to nuts almost after the, after the marketing. Yeah, I would say. Like, is there is there a way you bu- you have bumbled things after that interview and the offer? Yeah, I think that you know if if you get the biggest mistake that you can make is get really really like get too excited about a hire, mm. right? So like if you get really excited and you're and you really want to send out an offer right there, that could come back to bite you, right? It's really good to, to, in my opinion, I think it's a good idea to kind of sit back and wait and digest and like talk with your team about it. Yes. Have a little bit more reflection about the experience. Mm -hmm. Um, I have made mistakes, you know, sent out an offer a little bit too quickly. Um, The other thing is like main takeaway is it's a sales process. Mm. It's not an interrogation. It's not a, it's not a, uh, a test right? All you're trying to do 
is help you and the candidate get really, really clear on what is most important to them and what would, what would their dream outcome look like? Because if you know what they want, then you know what they value. Mm -hmm. Right. If you know what they want, you know what they value, you know, their intentions. Right. And, uh, if you can do that and you can help them realize what they really, really want. And then you, if they're value aligned and you can help them get there yeah. through mentorship or whatever it is, then create, try to find ways to make that work. Yeah. And yeah. don't find ways not to make it work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, yeah. I think there's, there's opportunities there, especially for some of the younger PT graduates where they have a student loans are an issue. And if they might ask, do you have a student loan repayment program? Nope. Well, let me look into it. Don't say that. Just say, let me look into it. Tap into our network and we can help you figure out what an appropriate student loan repayment program might look like. You know, don't just off the cuff say, no, I can't help you there. Well, oh, terrible idea. Do. See what you yeah, can do. So, so just say, Nathan, I'm going to look into that. So Nathan, let me ask you a question. Let's pretend like you owned a practice mm -hmm. and this candidate walked in rock star. The next Will Humphreys, <laughs> right? <laughs> there you go. The next Will Humphreys. And they said, I would, I would take this job and just help you blow this company up. If you could help me create, if you could help me with student loans, would you be willing to do that? I'm going to find a way. Oh, you're going to find a way. Dang it. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Like, of course. So yeah. the response is like, you know, Will, <laughs> We don't have a student loan program, but for the right people, I would love to support you with that. And I will, I can, I will write it in the contract, mm -hmm. but I will have something for you within the next three months. There you go. Right. Like right. let's create a possibility here. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. create a possibility. Right. I love it. Yeah. There's opportunities. And I think that we just need to be open to them. I love your conversation about how to structure that conversation. Um, and I, I think we could all do a little bit better on the interview process to just like, let's, let's let our guard down and get to know these people mm -hmm. and let's make sure that we like them. You know, let's work with people that we like. That's something that I've learned over time is I want to work with the people that I like being with outside of business. Cause these are people that you're going to be around for a long time. See them more often than your family, especially as a small clinic. So you better like them a lot. <laughs> it almost never not works out if you yeah. like them and if yeah. they like you. Right. At least you it's respect like, each other. Yeah. Like right. I'm willing to give a little, you're willing to give a little. We've got some common goals. Yeah. We see things similarly. I want to support you. You want to support me. Like how do you mm. not, that's a hard thing to beat, you know? Right. Yeah. And that's what everyone wants. Everyone wants, everyone wants to work with people that they like. And then mm -hmm. they, they consider family and enjoy being around. So that's right. Cool, man. Anything else you want to add? No, man, not, not, not at all. I think, uh, I think, I think it's really wise for you to just sit and think about what, what you're saying on the interview, what your intention is. Mm -hmm. And, uh, just be mindful that you're selling, you're selling an opportunity. Right. Gotcha. Well, if they have questions, they can reach out to you, Adam at PTO club.com or me, Nathan at PTO club.com or check out the website and book a business call with us. We can talk you through it. Absolutely. Don't forget to check out the Facebook group. Uh, tons of content in there, free resources for those who, who oh, joined yeah. the group. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we'd love to uh, have you hang out with us there too. All right. Thanks, man. All right, buddy. Peace out.